Welcome everybody back to AuburnVersus.com. Mike Savet at Sports Auto of the Upper Black Auburn News here with Colin Mick, Auburn University's beat writer for the Upper Black Auburn News. Colin, a win against Vanderbilt, a big win for this program who was struggling to find, I guess, an identity on offense against a team that they should have beaten. Uh, you know, trap game, chance for a letdown against Vanderbilt Saturday. Auburn didn't have that. Talk about the talk about the win and what this does for the team going into two obviously very tough road games. Well, I mean, anytime you win, you have to be happy. The way they won, you know, you have to be even happier uh, if you're Auburn. Uh, like you said, they didn't let down. They they did what they had to do. Obviously, they ran the ball with some success. Brandon Cox continues to pass efficiently, even if his numbers aren't there. He's settling for the short stuff, and, and they're making teams pay uh, for stacking the, the box against the run. Uh, Brad Lester's return obviously is big for this team, and the way he played. Uh, you know, the way Ben Tate played, the way Phantom played, all three of those backs will continue to make an impact, and obviously that's huge for them. Uh, talk about the way they opened up the playbook a little bit, started running some plays that they, they ran years before. Board, Al Borders said after the game that they were doing the little things right now, they can expand on some of those plays. But talk about the way, the main point that he wanted to make was the offensive line was coming off the ball. Young offensive line, now it'll get shuffled around. Talk about the play of the offensive line. Who's going to be across the board come, on, come Saturday against, uh, against Arkansas? And, and how important is it for those guys now to jealous you? Well, I mean, first of all, I think Al Borders will tell you that it's much easier to be creative on offense when you're not throwing the ball to the other team. Very true. When your team hangs on the ball, you're able to do some more creative stuff. The young offensive line, uh, obviously, is just set in, ingrained as a storyline for this season. And uh, it's going to be a challenge. Uh, Ryan Pugh, you know, has never started a game at center. He played well but not great, according to Hugh Nall, uh, you know, in his action against Vanderbilt at center. Uh, he's going to need to be better. Arkansas has got a big front. They're going to put eight in the box. They're going to challenge Brandon Cox to beat them in the run game. And to do that, Brandon Cox is going to have to get good pass protection. A big chunk of that is on Ryan Pugh's shoulders to call the front correctly, to identify Arkansas's defense. And you know, he'll have help. These other guys know what they're doing too. But a lot of the responsibility is still going to be on him. That's what Hugh Nall does. He expects the centers to be knowledgeable enough to be able to do that. And that is the biggest challenge right now for Ryan Pugh. Obviously, King Dunlap is another guy who faces the challenge. Did not play well earlier in the season, had a great week of practice and earned his way back into some playing time, then obviously got into a starting spot once Jason Bosley hurt his knee. Uh, King has to play better than he played in the first two or three games of the year to, to be ready you know, to, to play again. What did the return of Brad Lester do for this football team? Did they do anything, or, or was it just another guy that they can run in there that's a talented running back? I think as media and fans, we, we talk a lot about things like emotion and, and, and you know, things giving teams a lift. I don't necessarily know that that's the case. Obviously, they're happy to have Brad back, and Brad gives them another weapon, somebody else the defenses have to game plan for. Um, I think the most impressive thing, honestly, is the, the way Ben Tate played. Uh, Tate you know, had to deal with a whole week of questions about Brad Lester coming back, had to you know, give up some of his carries to Brad. And instead of going into a shell, Tate came out and had one of the best games of, of his season uh, after a great game against Florida, followed up with a very good game against Vanderbilt, and, and that's huge. Again, Adding a very talented back in Brad Lester to two very good backs in, uh, in, in Tate and Fannin, it can't be anything but good for all of them. Let's switch over to two other very good backs in Arkansas with Darren McFadden and Felix Jones. Who? Yeah, exactly. I don't, don't know if you've heard about these guys, but they're running backs for Arkansas. I, I just want to know, with the young defense for Auburn, and, and as banged up as they are, knowing that Arkansas moves the ball very, very physically on the ground with these two running backs that are pretty much interchangeable, what kind of threat does that pose for Auburn as banged up as they are? Well, young is obviously an adjective that applies to Auburn's defense, but darned good is another one, and I think a more uh, appropriate one. I mean, this defense has played good offenses already this year and has done very well. That's not to take anything away from Darren McFadden and Felix Jones. They're two guys who run the ball. This is a power running attack of a kind that Auburn hasn't seen since Mississippi State ran all over them a few weeks ago. It'll be very interesting to see Auburn response. Arkansas, the thing to remember of Arkansas is that they may have those two great backs, but they're winless this year against BCS, team, BCS conference teams. Uh, their wins are against Arkansas, North Texas, and Chattanooga, so, and their losses are to Alabama and Kentucky. So nobody really knows how good, if at all, Arkansas is right now. Obviously, beating Arkansas starts with stopping McFadden and Jones, but ironically, you don't even have to do that. Those guys have gotten their yards, and Arkansas still has not been able to win in their two conference games so far. How tough of a road trip is it to, with a young team to go to Fayetteville, another night game, they come back in two weeks and play LSU? We're taking it one game at a time here on Auburn versus. We don't look ahead. Yeah, we look. I look ahead. I, yeah. I ain't got no shame. I don't have to go out there and practice. But now with that trip coming back late, does it, it obviously doesn't set up well for a young team, and it, especially as physical as this game is going to be Saturday night going into LSU, which will be another physical game. Uh, they might have to pull some people off the field on some gurneys, you know, just as physical as it's going to be. How does this next two-game stretch look for Auburn? I mean, any time you're playing on the road at Arkansas and LSU, it, it's much, it, you'd much rather be playing at home against, say, North Texas and Chattanooga. But, um, you know, 
they're, they're going to play the games that are scheduled. The thing that Tommy Tuberville talked about Sunday is, is easing off the practice schedule a little bit, trying to keep their legs under them. Uh, these guys have now played, even the freshmen are veterans now that they've played six games, and so they don't have to hit it quite as hard in practice. There are some things they can do to, to keep the energy high for what is still, I think, another five games before an open week. Uh, with, and like you say, two night games on the road is going to be a real challenge, regardless of how much rest they get. Predictions. Predictions. So close this is my favorite year. part. So close last year. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I really, I just hate uh, predicting Auburn games, especially well, this season. Do it. <laughs> they're the least predictable team in America. Uh, but I'm going to say that Arkansas just does not have enough, uh, despite those two very great players. I'm going to say that Auburn wins this one fairly easily. I'm going to say 24 to 14. 24-14. I like it. And I'll, I'll pick. I think it's going to be a little bit closer, a little bit more of a defensive battle. 13-10 with a uh, West Byram field goal. Giving me no end. name Arkansas details. Just because I want, you to do, I want you to do more work. Yeah, if it's a close Friday, game, I'll be, it'll be really fun on deadline. So, that is, so I'm, I'm hoping for that, Colin. <laughs> Just trying to help you out, bud. All right, we appreciate you guys joining us. Next week we'll be back to, to review the, the Arkansas game and look ahead to LSU, who will probably still be number one in the country when, when Auburn goes there in two weeks. We thank you for joining us. We'll be back next week on AuburnVersus.com.